Hello and welcome to Food and Art from our table to yours. I'm Denissa Young. I've been your host and MC all week. We're so excited that you're here. We will wait a couple minutes just to introduce our chef as everyone is logging on. Um, if you can hear me, we are so pumped that you are joining us for our fourth night of Food and Art from our table to yours, a Friday Arts Project fundraiser. Um, if Hello you and welcome our to Food um, and Art from our table to tuning in. You can introduce yourself in the chat. Let us know where you're from. If you're watching on Facebook, it should be on the right. If you are from anywhere other than Rock Hill, let us know. We'd love to know who's joining in on the big party. And with that being said, I would like to introduce you to our chef for the night. And I am unmuting them, but it's not working yet. Here we go. Well, hi, everybody. This here's Eli, and I'm going to be your camera operator for the evening. My name's Steve Giraffe. I'm Eli's best friend, but we're both big fans of you, Miss Denissa. <laughs> so without further ado, let me get behind this thing here. We're going to introduce our mystery chef, Miss Emily Doling, and she's going to be making a delicious eggplant parm for us tonight. So here we go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, so that's my intrepid cameraman, Steve. Um, and we hope that our little <laughs> sous chef over there will be um, cooperative with us tonight. So um, welcome to my home and to our kitchen. Um, tonight we're gonna be making eggplant parmesan, um, kind of a version of it that I've found that I really enjoy. Um, and we'll just kind of take you through all the steps in making um, this uh, dish tonight. So hope you enjoy it. Um, I want to just start, we turn on the oven to get it preheated to 425 and I've got a, um, a, a cookie sheet in the oven heating up. So it's got a lip, a lip on it and that's important. You'll find out later, but um, those of you who have cooked with eggplant before, you know that um, one of the more important steps to begin with is that you want to salt and drain your eggplant. So I started this a little while ago so that we don't have to wait the hour or so that it takes to do this. But I've got some eggplant here in a colander that I've pre-sliced to um, rounds that are about yay thick. I don't know if that's maybe a half inch, three quarter inch, something like that. And I've salted both sides pretty generously and put them in a colander so that they could release some of the liquid and that keeps it from being soggy. The thing I really like about this dish and it's um, a, a take on eggplant parmesan that I found from America's Test Kitchen is that it really um, kind of maintains a crispness to it uh, because sometimes the eggplant parmesan you get is very soggy and I like that this one kind of keeps a little bit of a uh, crispiness to it. So this is an important first step and once you've um, salted your eggplant and allowed it to sort of sit like this for 45 minutes to an hour, you're going to go ahead and put it on um, some stacks of um, paper towels and what we're going to do now is we're going to press all of the moisture out of the eggplant. So I've got some additional paper towels here and I'm going to just really lean into them. <laughs> is this how you get your aggression out, Emily? Pounding it is. Eggplant? Beat up everything, yep. So this is just, you know, you're, you're, you're getting quite a bit of moisture out. You'll like find, if you think that the, like this, you salt it pretty generously, but really the salt kind of comes out with the liquid. So it's not a probably an issue, but you might want to also, when you're done with this, just sort of dust them, just to make sure you don't have like a whole bunch of extra salt hanging out on your eggplant. So. <laughs> awesome. If anyone has any questions during this process, feel free to put them in the comments and we will bring them to Emily's attention as we see fit. But so far people are saying you're a natural at this, Emily. Oh, thank you. Wow. This is this is the easy part. So <laughs> all right. So I've got that done. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the sink here. And then the next um, thing that we're gonna do is we are going to bread our eggplant, which is a three-step process. So we've got, what I find the easiest thing to do is to take you know, three pie pans or cake pans or something along those lines. And you're gonna you know, kind of be creating a bit of an assembly line. We have quite enough space, but we're gonna have um, a flour, uh, eggs, and then the panko crumbs mixed with Parmesan. So the first thing I'm gonna do in one of these is I've got a half a cup of, pow of uh, flour. Oh, and just so you know, the recipe calls for um, two whole globe eggplant. Um, this is just one right now. I have some others kind of prepared, but I just wanna show you this process and not to spend too much time on it. So we're just doing a small one right now. 
So I've put the flour in one of the dishes and I'm going to salt this nice and generously. And then put some cracked pepper in there as well. And just you because- that sound of the pepper grinding, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite sounds in the kitchen. And just cause I'm a little extra here, I'm gonna put some garlic powder cause can't have too much garlic. Yeah, as Dr. Brown says, the red powder brings out every other flavor in the dish. Yeah. All right, so got that. That's that's gonna be step one. Okay, so next we've got two eggs. Got our two eggs. And we're gonna whisk these up. How did this recipe come into your life or your kitchen, Emily? So um, when I lived right out of college, I lived in Connecticut for a short period of time working at a school up there. And we were about two hours outside of Boston. And um, I think it was one of the summers, my mom and um, my aunt came up to visit. Um, and we stayed in the North End, which in Boston is a, um, it's a very like Italian neighborhood. You have a lot of Italian restaurants, a lot of old Italian people that live there. It's really awesome. It's where like the Paul Revere house is. But we found a little um, deli, I guess you can say it's not really deli, but it's an Italian sandwich shop up there. Um, and we started eating, one of the day we ordered an eggplant Parmesan sandwich and it was so good that we had it like three days in a row. It was really good. So, and then into this um, other dish, we're gonna put, a cup and a half of panko crumbs. And panko is just a breadcrumb that's a little bit more coarse and it um, it's crunchier. So it makes a really nice crust. And then we're gonna put in half a cup of um, finely grated Parmesan. Nice, do you have a favorite brand of Parmesan or are you just like a generic kind of lady? No, I'm not. I'm not really particular. I'm sure some people are, but a little bit worse. Yeah. I'm okay with just plain Parmesan. You can get like finer ones if you're going to eat, but I don't know that with this dish, it's that important because you've got a lot of, I mean, if you're just eating the Parmesan, that was the thing, but I think you've got a lot of other things going on here. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, but all right. Oh yeah. So anyways, we, when I came back from that trip, I wanted to kind of create a plant Parmesan, look at a lot of recipes. Um, this one was on, I think it was on the C um, PBS one morning on America's Chess Kitchen and I thought it was really good. So tried it out. So the next step is that we're going to be putting um, the eggplant into this. I know if you know the method of having a dry hand and a wet hand. Um, so I tried to use the left hand really just to place the, um, the eggplant in the flour so you don't get it coated on all of the different toppings. So I'm using the tongs so that you don't get your hand all goopy up. So dust it in the flour, and then we're going to drop it in the egg, in the eggs and coat that nicely in the eggs. Okay, and then kind of let that come off. And then we're going to put it and really press it into the crumbs and the parmesan. You want to get a lot of that goodness on there. So I like to come that up. parmesan panko is what gives us like the big good crunch, right? That gives you the crunchy crust, yeah. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take these out and we'll do a few more of these bad boys. And then you're putting them back on the paper towel just to kind of take Just them to wait. Just okay. to hang out until the, the second step. So they, I don't want to put them back on like the wet spot necessarily, but they're just going to wait for the next step. So Let I'm us know in the home. comments if you've ever been to Boston or if you have been to the North End. Uh, I went to college in Boston at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts and I love the North End. I was always too poor to really eat there, but <laughs> one time I found five dollars on the floor of Mike's Pastry and I bought myself a cannoli and it was amazing. That's yeah, I, we, we went there. This is a neat place. It's got a lot of history and they put a lot of the pictures up of um, famous people that have been there. I think Sinatra used to go there and other famous people, but they have great cannolis. They have these things, um, I don't know if you try them, called a lobster tail. It's another uh, sort of a pastry 
Flaky I love crumbs. a good lobster tail. Lobster tails are like these big kind of croissant fluffy pastries with like cream in them. They're uh -huh. so good. Yeah, that was, I think they were pretty, I think they were pretty famous for that. So it's kind of a famous place. Take the gun, leave the cannolis. <laughs> <laughs> yep. If you're just tuning in, this is Friday Arts Projects, um, food and art from our table to yours. We're here live in Emily Dolan's kitchen in Fort Mill, South Carolina. I'm tuning in from Rock Hill, just about 20 minutes down 77 uh, from, the, from the Friday Arts Project studio. And we have behind the camera Steve, an incredible friend of Eli Doling. And we're very excited to be learning about eggplant parm from our beautiful chef, Emily. That's right. So. Almost done with this step, and then I will show you the next part of the process. And then we'll go on to making sauce. Yeah, so if you guys are just tuning in, like I said, Emily's making eggplant parm. And so far, we have cut and soaked and salted the eggplant previously. And now we are dipping it in a bath of, what was it, flour and salt and pepper yes. and garlic powder with eggs, and then also in some panko bread crumbs with some Parmesan cheese. Mm -hmm. Yep, hence the name, right? <laughs> All right, just a few left. So the thing I like about this is like, I know there's different ways you can kind of prepare it and you could, you know, fry it. This this kind of lightly fries it the way we're gonna do it today. So it's not like a deep fried greasy mess, but it kind of gives it a, a little bit of that crispy fried quality. Um, so you'll see kind of the process of that. We're gonna do, we're gonna do that in the oven in a minute. I also think to, to clear up some confusion, if we could have Steve come a little bit around the, uh, the camera, there was some confusion on who he was and the role he's playing tonight. Oh, Steve, um, do you have a moment here? Oh, hi. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Steve. Uh, Steve had technical difficulty. Technical difficulty, folks. I have to sit the camera down so I can come back around and see you. Hold on. There I am. Yes, I am Steve. There's there's some other guy who lives around here. I, I don't know what his name is, but he uh, where where is he? I don't know, Steve. Scare away. Must be. I'm pretty intimidating. <laughs> but yes, I'm the cam I'm your camera operator tonight. I'm also Eli's best friend. It's good to right. finally meet you, Steve. Steve, come on over here. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show the friends at home our, our next step. All right. So I mentioned earlier that I had the oven preheated to 425 and in that oven, I put a cookie sheet. So it'll get nice and hot while we were, while we were waiting. So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna put- Would you look at that? Yeah, I know, right? We're gonna put some mm -hmm. olive oil on this cookie sheet. And this is going to basically allow us to sort of oven fry our parmesan. So I've, I've put some oil and we're gonna kind of toss this around. So we get it nicely coated. Just make sure it's What's all coated. What's the benefit in. of heating it previously, Emily? So it's hot and ready to go, and it kind of starts to fry it. Um, so you don't because again, the point is not to make it soggy. If, if it just sits in there in the oil and gets like cold oil, it's gonna soak the oil into the breadcrumbs, and and it will make it soggy instead of start to kind of fry it. So what a pro tip. Pro tip. You heard it here on Food and Art. Heat up the cookie pan, the cookie sheet, before you put on the eggplant parm. There we go. All right, so we'll stick this back into our hot oven. Here we are. And we are going to cook the um, first side for 20 minutes. And so we'll set a timer for 20 minutes. And when that is finished, we will flip them over and cook them for another 10 minutes. So then that will be complete. But the magic of television, man, I'll tell you what. Here it comes. Bam. Here it comes. We have some all ready to go. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. look at her. So that will be our, our end result here of this step number one. So we'll let those cook. But um, in the effort to conserve some time, we're, I just wanted to kind of show you what they look like. So they'll get a nice like brown crust on them and the eggplant will be a little you know, more tendered and cooked. The next step, we're going to come over here to the stove top now. And we are going to make a sauce for this. So the sauce is um, 
two cans of diced tomatoes. Um, although if you want to, you can do one can of diced tomato and one can of uh, tomato sauce because we're going to kind of blend up one of these anyhow. We'll have one shallot that you're going to have nicely diced up already. And um, it calls for three cloves of garlic. I take any garlic recommendation in a recipe as sort of a starting point. So <laughs> I tend to put more garlic than that, but it's really up to your own personal taste and preference. Um, but I went ahead and chopped these up for us previously. So we've got garlic and shallots um, mixed and, top and chopped up there. So we're gonna go ahead and get the burner going here on our saucepan. And of course we have olive oil, it's very important. What's super great about this recipe is that it is in our food and art cookbook that was designed by Sarah Kennedy Irwin. And hot take guys, we just have one left. So here's, and here's the cookbook here too. So I'm, I'm using the cookbook now as we're, as we're going through the process, so. It works, right, so she can read from a book. <laughs> recipe, a recipe she wrote. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier than otherwise. It seems like most of my recipes now are things I print off the, the internet. I've got paste, pieces of paper everywhere, so. Um, you know, it'd be really meta is if you could pretend to hand her the book and then she could receive the book and then be like oh, you were handing well, the book to each other. Steve, you know, I wish you'd thought about this uh, beforehand, so we could work this out, but anyway. So I'm gonna take one of these cans, um, while the oil is getting a little bit hot, um, we're gonna take one of these can cans, and we are going to kind of emulsify it a little bit. So I've got What's an, emulsify? Immer an immersion blender. This is a stick or a stick blender. And we're gonna put that into here, and we're just gonna plus that until we sort of liquefy our tomatoes a little bit more. Now, do you have to have one of these to do this? You don't. And like I said, you, one of the cans, if you wanted to just buy tomato sauce, that'd be fine too. I, just, I like doing that. But, um, you want like a little bit of chunks, but you don't want it to be all chunks. So, um, okay. So I think, let's see if our oil is getting hot. We're going to go ahead and throw our shallots and garlic in there. What seems really awesome about this recipe, Emily, is that you could be as elaborate or as store-bought as you want. Because you could really just buy a store-bought pasta sauce and throw you it could. on. Yeah. Or you could take time, like you're doing now, to build everything from scratch. Yeah, you definitely could. So we're going to let that kind of get going for us here. And then in the meantime, I'm going to pull out some basil. We're going to go over here and I'm going to show you how to chiffonade the basil. You mean the secret ain't oregano? <laughs> All right, so I've got my basil leaves and we'll just kind of pluck those off of their stems. Are you a gardener? Are these from your yard? These are not, I usually do have herbs in my yard. I have not planted anything because we have not gone to the hardware store yet this year because we're kind of avoiding that. So unfortunately, I usually grow oh, oh, herbs. Because it's a global pandemic? I know, right? I usually grow herbs and tomatoes, but right now we have, well, we had a pot full of ants for a while. <laughs> dead you now, but you can try those the, mint, go the mint came back and that's been the only thing that kind of came back on its own. So I, to chiffonade the basil, you're gonna roll it into kind of like, you're gonna take the, um, the leaves, stack them together and kind of roll them into a little roll. And then you just take your knife and thinly slice it. All the way across. So you have your basil like so. It's nice to do plenty of basil for this because I just and basil is one of those things you can't you don't really want to pre prepare it beforehand too much because it very quickly turns brown and it loses some of its flavor. And this is going to go in the sauce, but we'll also when we serve the dish, we'll put a little bit on top for a garnish. Awesome. We have a question here in the chat. Where did you learn this recipe, which we kind of touched on? She went to Boston um, and she lived around Connecticut when she was younger. But also the second part of the question is, have you added your own touch to it? And if so, what was the touch? I think I just more, um, I, I add things to, to my own taste. Like I add um, a little red, red pepper flakes to it. So, and then I'll sometimes add a little bit of a tiny, like, dried Italian seasoning too, which is kind of, you know, I put more garlic in it than when it calls for because it's like a lot of garlic. Um, 
So, but yeah, it, it is kind of derived from uh, American Chef Kitchen, which is the same organization kind of that puts out Cooks Illustrated. Um, it's a Christopher Kimball also that he was in. So I, I really like them. They test out a lot of things. Um, you know, they, they, they'll try a recipe in many different ways to kind of come up with what they think is sort of the best version of it. And I, I like a lot of their recipes. So. Do you cook a lot, Emily? I do cook a lot, yeah. Um, I grew up cooking. Uh, my mom cooked a lot. She's actually um, a food blogger and she does like cookbook reviews and restaurant reviews and stuff like that. So she taught us to cook growing up. Um, and actually the cocktail that we're gonna make later is her recipe from her blog. So oh. um, yeah, you look at, it's creative-culinary.com. And she, yeah, she does food and cocktails primarily what she does. I've actually had the privilege of sitting at the table uh, with the Dolings, and they do make a very great meal and are great neighbors and hosts. Um, and we made an apple crisp together, Vanessa. Yeah, we did. That was so fun. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, so I got that going. I'm going to put a pinch of red pepper flakes in here to give it a little kick. I'm pretty lucky to live in this house. Oh, Steve. You got her. All right, so I've got that. And I'm going to go ahead and dump one of these the cans of the diced tomatoes that I have not. Turn up. And then the can that I kind of blended up a little bit. Got to get all that out of there. And I'm a, I'll put like a, a smidge of water in it too, just to kind of because it'll cook out, it'll cook down. Give that a go. And I can't, Steven, hmm? said, Steven said this yesterday too, about the garlic, going back a little bit, that like garlic recipes are just a suggestion, this, the amount, and then you just like amp it up. And I think I have such a love for garlic. Oh yeah, I think it's a starting point. Whenever I read a recipe, I usually at least double it. <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> That other guy that lives around here really loves garlic. I hear tell. You hear tell? Yeah. I'll let him know. I'll text him, Steve, and tell him that you said that. All right. Also, He'll appreciate it. <laughs> you're getting some requests, Emily, for a full-on multiple uh, edition cooking show. People just want to oh. see you and hear you do this all the time. Well, I'd be happy to. I, I mean, this is, like, embarrassing, but, like, when I was single, I lived alone. If I was cooking, I often like talked to myself as I did it as though I was doing a cooking show. So good practice there. <laughs> That's awesome. I also, Whoa. I, <laughs> when I was a kid, I also used to pretend I had a cooking show and would like, yeah, just present my meal to myself always. Like, and now we will be spreading the peanut butter on the bread. We're adding like, I'm adding a little pinch of sugar here, just a pinch to kind of cut the acidity of the tomatoes. That's almost as weird as having an imaginary friend. And Steve, what are you? An imaginary friend? Uh... <laughs> it's anyone's guess, well, really. I don't know. I mean, y'all can see me, right? We do see you. Can you? Oh, okay. You look good, Some, Steve. Sometimes I don't know if I'm imaginary or not. <laughs> I'm like a character in someone else's story. That's right. It's well, existentially well, a problem for me. Up. I'm actually turning down just a smidgen so we don't pop everything. It's getting there pretty quick. You don't have to really cook it for a super long time, but we just want to kind of heat it up and cook it through. Um, I'm going to get out my mozzarella that I have grated up. So I, I got a log. Of, I do like a good mozzarella for this. Um, and I got up a log of mozzarella and I threw it through my, um, my Cuisinart has a, an attachment that looks like this. If y'all have this, one of these discs. So I just throw it in there so it grates it up. Which well. is in the now, if you don't have one of those, what would you use? You could use a grater. It's just it gets longer. And that's in the with the food processor, Emily. Yeah, it's in the food processor. It's just an attachment that goes on it that grates cheese or vegetables or any number of things that you might need to grate. So, yeah, where the comments is is a little bit asking about where Chris is, and I think the consensus Steve and I came up with is he's off doing something else. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, he he's off doing something else. He's probably like crying or petting the dog or. He might be. He might be back later. We'll see. Isn't it tragic with these absentee fathers? It's true. Man. 
you know? It's a shame. <laughs> oh, the littlest sous chef is starting to voice his concern. Oh, Lordy. Now, Eli, listen, we told you it's mom's show tonight. You gotta, you gotta hold on for us here, buddy. Just, just play with your blanket. Now I'll give you a hug there. Rest easy, okay? Yeah. All right. Back to the show. All right. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our basil into our sauce now. Kind of do that at the end so that we don't lose the freshness of it. We'll go ahead and add that in. Lots of basil. And I'm going to add just a, like a little bit of just an Italian seasoning blend too, just because I like some of the other flavors as well. And that's not really in the recipe, but kind of, again, your own pre preference how you like it. Did right, you come from us. a family of cooks, Emily? Did I what? Did you come from a family who cooked a lot together? Just my mom. I mean, my dad didn't start cooking. He cooks now that he's like retired, but he um, he didn't cook when we were young. My mom cooked a lot. So we learned to cook pretty young. All right, let's need some salt. Let's put a little pepper. What's that bread he likes more than anything else in the world? Who? Your dad. Bread? Yeah, it's banana bread, is it? Is that what he makes every oh. time? Oh, he makes um, bread pudding. Bread pudding, that's what it is. Yeah. He has a, a bourbon bread pudding recipe he likes. Okay, so for the assembly now, we'll go ahead and, and bring this over here. Go ahead and kill the heat there. We're going to start by putting a very thin layer on the bottom. So kind of. So this is an all vegetarian recipe. It is. It's not vegan, but it's vegetarian. So, so we got vegetarians huh? in the house tonight. Yep. Let us know in the comments if you're a vegetarian. So we've got our little sauce here. We're going to move this out of the way. Boom. How are we doing on time, Vanessa? We're doing great. We got, we're barely at like a little less than 30 minutes. We've awesome. already done it. Yeah. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and layer are this is a, this is the um, eggplant that I pre-cooked. So I've got a bunch of it and I want to go ahead and sort of layer it here. I, I it'll kind of nestle amongst itself, but uh, I put a little bit more than a So we'll kind of start that for the first layer. y'all hear the music? Yeah, we have a little um, Italian music going on. Nice. And I'm going to put some sauce on. Again, we're not going to, the goal isn't for it to be gloopy. I think that's the thing with this recipe that's different than some, is I don't want it to be gloopy and smooshy. We're going to put a little bit so that we get a little bit of sauce on each, um, each piece here. Wow, that looks amazing. How's that look? Good? I just a little bit more. All right, perfect. And then, watering. Huh? I said, whose mouth is watering right now? It's mine. Now we're gonna take our mozzarella. Not mine. Oh. Nope. We're gonna take our mozzarella and sprinkle some of that on top of all of it. Oh, yeah, we we have a request. Uh, for some louder singing, Emily. Would you grace us with your voice? For some singing? Yes. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh, is there anything she can't do? There you go. All right, now I'm gonna, I've got some more left, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of make another little layer here. That don't move you to tears, what will? <laughs> Shut up, Steve. <laughs> he was yeah. a great sidekick. I, I didn't even know we were gonna get your presence tonight, Steve. I'm, I'm pumped. Well. Well, normally I'm just a camera operating professional, but what I really wanna do is direct. Oh, Steve. <laughs> you want creative control, don't you, Steve? <laughs> All of it. All right, so we're getting there. No, just a little. All right, now I put the rest of the, the um, eggplant that I have on kind of another layer and I'm using up this sauce because we're going to use up our good sauce. Comments are blowing up about the singing, Emily. 
Oh, all right. You got a wow. Oh. She's even written a novel. So love this. Wow, this is fantastic. Bravo. Emily has a new voice. Sing louder. Uh, y'all are, are so sweet. Yeah, she does two things. What? No, she does way more than that. We also got a, this woman is a queen. Emily, we don't deserve you. Is Emily a soprano? Yes, I'm a soprano. I I was like a, yeah, I'm, I've been in a lot of choirs my whole life and I've traveled a lot in choir. I've sung in Europe, I've sung in Australia. So, yep, so I'm putting more some um, Parmesan on top after I put that um, delicious mozzarella on. And I think that's looking pretty good. What do you think, Steve? I'm gonna eat it now. No, I'm kidding. Steve, you need to be patient. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pop mm. this in our hot oven. Because now you see down there, there's our eggplant we're, we're cooking from, from before. And see, you hear it sizzling up pretty good? It looks awesome. I do yeah. indeed. So we're going to put this in on top. And that's going to cook for like 13 to 15 minutes to get heated through. And I'm going to have my assistant Alexa set a timer for 15 minutes. All right. Also, back to Emily's singing really quick before we transition to the next section. Uh, Emily's a part of a local choir, the Rock Hill Choir. So when the world opens back up again, you can probably hear her sing if you're local. Yeah, um, it's the York, York County Choral Society that I sing in here in town and um, directed by um, Kathy um, Kinsey. And yeah, we're shut down for a little while too because unfortunately they say singing is a is one of those things you can't do in public. So it's too bad. Our book, Emily. It's a great group. Um, okay, so I thought what we would do, since we've got a little time to kill while that is doing it, the next part of tonight is going to be a little bit of cocktail. Um, now this kind of, I wanted to tie this all in together a little bit into the story of how I found this, uh, you know, eggplant parmesan in Boston. When you eat it, Italian restaurants in Italy, when I've been to like Rome, um, a, a very common thing that they do after a meal is they bring you a little glass of limoncello as kind of a digestive, um, and it's just a nice way to kind of end the meal. And when my mom and I went to this little restaurant called Strega in the North Ends, they brought us a little glass of limoncello afterwards. And so she was inspired to make a cocktail from that um, that would feature limoncello and also would feature Prosecco. So I wanted to tie this together for Fry art since this whole thing is a replacement for our pie and prosecco fundraiser. Um, last year we had a really great time getting together, having some prosecco and some pie. So it's a little homage to that. And <laughs> come on, I'm gonna break something. Technical but... difficulties. I can do it. I can do it. Wait, I got a trick for you. I got a trick for you. It's almost there. She got. She got a trick for you. Oh. What's your trick? My trick is you put a, a little dish towel over it so you can pop it really hard and it doesn't hit anybody in the eye. That's probably a good idea. I should have done that. All right, so and I've got some ice cold glasses. This woman with her tricks. And we've got some ice cold lemon cello. The goal of this is to make a very refreshing summer cocktail tonight. Kind of be like an Italian lemonade. And we are going to, we've got some frozen raspberries. And this is going to call for yeah. one part lemoncello. Oh man, I'm going to need your trick now, Vanessa. Hold on. <laughs> Steve, I might need you. <laughs> oh, all right. Hold on. <laughs> Giraffes are mighty strong. Hold on. Oh, oh no, I got it. I got it. Oh, I got you got it. it? Woo! All right. She's close. a strong, independent woman. That was close. Oh, let's take a quick break because I'm going to have to flip these bad boys over really quick here. It's getting intense, folks. Oh, okay. Here we are. It's a shark. See, now you got a hand puppet. That's right. Okay, so this was... Steve, um, you're a hand puppet? Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm not. No way. Uh, I'm a real giraffe, and that is a real shark. So... You see here, I'm gonna flip these over. We had those cooking for 20 minutes in that 
you see how the oil, the little bit of oil that we had there was just enough to kind of get them started to fry up nice. So we'll put these back in our oven and set that timer for 10 more minutes. Boom. Okay, back to the cocktail. You mean we don't just put them in a giant turkey fryer like we did in Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right, I'm going to show that. All right, so we're going to do one part limoncello. Two parts per second. Notice how she's also mixing the cocktail straight into the beverage. My kind of lady. Right, hold on. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Are there any kids listening? <laughs> well, at least one. He don't talk yet, though. All right. Hold on. So, yeah, one part limoncello. It's two parts per seco. We're going to toss ourselves some little handful of razzleberries, frozen razzleberries in there. Make it fizz up real nice. Woohoo! And for a garnish. A little sprig of mint in each one. Take a look at that, Steve. Well, would you look at that? Give it up for these mm. That looks good enough to drink. That's right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. I don't Cheers. have a cocktail, but I do have a fancy glass. It's pretty good. Here's mud in your eye. You want to try a sip, Steve? Wow, I can tell you folks that it really is good. You got to make this for yourself. <laughs> I got Thank you so much. <laughs> she involves me in her work. Not many people are this nice to their cameraman. That's right. I dropped the recipe for the lemoncello raspberry situation into the chat. So if you want to bookmark that for later, it's there. Emily was so generous in letting me good see plan. the recipe. <laughs> so I figured that'd be a nice way to kind of have a little, uh, little Italian cocktail to go along with our dinner and um when you're making this at home i think a, a good side you can either choose to just have the um eggplants you know some people like it with noodles if you want to make spaghetti to go with it or um you know or just a side salad um i i just eat it yeah by itself and we probably we'll probably start with a salad later tonight once we uh, are done with our show um but yeah if you want to make some spaghetti and, and layer that on top of the spaghetti with that's that's a good way to do it too like side of focaccia bread, something like that. So just a couple more minutes. Let's take a look and see how it's going in here. Yeah, do we have any questions for Emily so far about the process, about Steve, about singing? <laughs> about Emily, Hello, how Mr. Shark. Huh? <laughs> how has um, adjusting to being a working mom and the pandemic and a cook and a chef and a wife, how's that all been going for you? It's been a very interesting time. We had baby right before um, the pandemic started. So thankfully we were able to uh, get him to meet parents and grandparents and everything before um, we kind of got quarantined into our house. Um, so during my maternity leave, it was great. I had a lot of time to cook as my husband will attest, probably too much time to cook. We had a lot of baked goods. I got really good at making pizza dough. Um, yeah, so it's probably a little too much. Now that I've kind of returned back to work, it's a little bit more um, challenging. I'm actually on a furlough right now. Last week and this week, I'm, I'm furloughed. Been fine with us because it's uh, given us the opportunity to spend more time with the baby. But yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Chris is working from home and I'm, I'm also now working from home too. But we're still cooking a lot. I think that's the, the thing about this too is that you know, with, uh, you're trying to kind of limit the time to grocery stores. So I've dusted off some old recipes, really gotten good about planning what I'm going to cook that week before I go to the store. So I make sure I have everything I need. And I've, you know, tried some new, some new recipes too, while we've been at it. That's awesome. You have some comments here. What, um, what kind of dessert would you serve with this dish? Hmm. I mean, you could go very traditional and do like a tiramisu or something, but I honestly, like, I think when you've had a big dish, it's kind of nice to have like just a light sorbet. That's something that's just kind of not really heavy. Um, so maybe a fruit sorbet, especially, you know, when you're having the limoncello, maybe nice to have like a citrus fruit sorbet afterwards. Keep it light. So a sorbet. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. 
awesome. And then does this dish keep well in the fridge or does it get soggy? Well, it'll keep, but yeah, it's not as good as when you have it fresh because it will, it, it won't, that crispiness does go away. I mean, it's like if you have, when you have fried chicken, when you put it in the fridge, I mean, the next day it's not got that same crispy quality to it. So it's a little like this, but isolated, I think it's good. So. <laughs> there's other ways you could repurpose it once it's been in the fridge like you could get a piece of pizza slap it on there put that in the oven then you kind of like revive it i heard this like really a sandwich you can do like a hoagie and put some of that that's where that's the, the first one i had you could do that um I heard a great trick from alexis howard and dylan banister they're artists here in our community if you know them uh what dylan does to revive anything that's like crispy in the microwave he'll put the the, the food on a plate like a chicken tender and then put a cup of water also in the microwave separate. And that sort of steaming element kind of helps revive everything back to life. And it's the best pro tip besides all the tips we've seen tonight. I will have to try that out. I've not, I've not heard that before. So I'll have to give that a go sometime. Maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll have leftovers and see if that works out. So thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Every yeah, night, leftovers. <laughs> every night we've also had sort of like a food controversy come up. Is there any controversies with this dish we should discuss? Is it controversial? Yeah, is there any no. controversies to this? I guess maybe well, like- she's asking if there's any controversies with the dish. Yeah, I know. Any she's... arguments you gotten into, any bar fights? No, not from my side. I think she's asking her, uh, her viewers. <laughs> well, we. I mean, I guess a controversial point would be like, do you serve it on pasta or on salad? That could be a controversial element. You know, are you a modern, if you know about Boston or the North End, Emily and I were talking earlier today about Mike's Pastry, which is a really famous uh, cannoli shop. And down the street from it is modern pastry. It's often a controversial fight of like who has the better cannoli. And Emily and I both agreed it's Mike's Pastry. So not sponsored, but we love Mike's. <laughs> yep. Is there any other things you're working on in quarantine besides cooking and taking care of a small human? That's a lot to do. You, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we try to get out and walk a lot. I, I think my, my little hobby, I started a diamond painting, which is kind of lame, but it, it gives me something to do in the evenings. Um, Let's go see. All right. She's going to show you the diamond painting. Here, I got to clear away some of this stuff here. There it is. Isn't it gorgeous? I love the diamond well, painting. I like it. I think the diamond painting should have its own exhibition in the courtroom gallery. It could. It could. I will I will submit it to the next uh, the next show. I'm <laughs> sure it'll definitely take the, the prize. Small plug for that. If you're watching, uh, the courtroom gallery is taking submissions for 2021. Uh, the submission deadline is June 30th. So. Uh, if you would like to apply, we have a couple shows available for 2021 as we have adjusted for 2020. Um, but I hope to see Emily's uh, glitter painting in there. No, not yet. All right. I think this is looking about done. Let's see. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? That's good enough. I'm thinking that's probably good enough. <laughs> And pull that bad boy out of there. And there you have it. Eggplant Parmesan. Behold in all of its glory. Give it up for Emily. What a great recipe. What a great time in her kitchen with that lemon cello. Yep. So toast to all of you and your homes. And hope you guys are all enjoying your time together with your families. And hopefully you'll have an opportunity to make some new dishes uh, in your kitchens. Who would have thought you could do all that with lemon jello? Go be Steve. <laughs> Cheers, Emily. Thank you so much for being with us. Wish yeah. you all. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun uh, to Bye be with you. Bye, Steve. I'm going to put you guys on mute just for a second. I'm so grateful uh, for Emily and the Dolings. What wasn't said also is the Dolings have been original uh, members of Friday Arts Project and a huge and generous couple who's patroned us in so many ways through cooking, through promoting, through being on our board, through giving so many generous gifts over and over and over again. So we're so grateful for the Dolings and we're so grateful for all of you who tuned in to the Eggplant Parm 
we're very excited uh, for the rest of the week to continue unfolding for food and art from our table to yours. Uh, you can get tickets tonight uh, for 8 p.m. John Hendricks will be in our Zoom room and you can get those tickets at FridayArtsProject.org. Um, our Zoom or our Facebook master will probably drop the link in the chat and you can grab a ticket for tonight. It's gonna be an awesome conversation between co-founder Stephen Crox Crotz, who's also the king of grits, uh, Chris Fox, who's also the empanada man, and then our co, our director, uh, Kirk Irwin. Um, and then John Hendricks, who's a best, a New York Times bestselling illustrator, will be with us tonight at 8 p.m. So you're not going to want to miss that. And then tomorrow is the last day of food and art from our table to yours. So join us for uh, Kirk. He'll be in, we'll be in the kitchen at the perch. And then we'll be in the Zoom room with Josette Adabaye of Hasat Kinu. And she's tuning in all the way from Izmir, Turkey. And what you can't see right now is Steve entertaining Elliot. So as the last final note, I will let them say goodbye to you if I can get them unmuted. Here we go. Bye, Elliot. Bye, Steve. Bye. Bye, Mr. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks, Bye, everybody. everybody.